Hello and welcome back. And uh, in this video, we're going to be uh, continue to explore, basically create a more complex example of uh, tab view. So we're going to see how we can add our own tabs uh, for the tab view. Okay. So let's go ahead and and jump in, jump right in. So uh, I'm going to create a new uh, function here. So we're going to continue from our last video, and uh, we're simply going to create a function here tab with views and we're going to see some uh some other like you know view use cases some useful view ca uh, use cases of like you know views and modifiers like uh, i was thinking maybe we can take a look at image uh like you know how trim on the image works um let's take a look at sample for divider and group uh, as a part of these tabs that we're going to create okay so uh, with that said, let's go ahead and, and create a few uh, tabs first, and then we're gonna populate uh, their um, their content. Okay. So first, we're gonna create our um, func, and uh, we're gonna say first one is gonna be image sample. Okay. So we're gonna use that one, um, and that image sample is going to once again return some view. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and, and write text here, text, image sample for now. Okay. And uh, we can uh, simply go to our uh, tab view and then say um, image, image sample, right, dot tab item. And uh, now here uh, we can give our um, image, uh, basically our tab, a custom icon. So system name, and we can just give it a photo dot on dot rectangle, for example, just something random. Okay, text, image, images, okay. And uh, we're gonna use this tab with views as an example let's go ahead and open our canvas um whoa okay that was new okay all right so it's gonna build and basically create uh this um image sample this tab with view well okay so tab item uh we have uh a tab item and i have no idea why it's not showing the tab <laughs> that is very odd okay well, let's go ahead and, and continue and then um we will see well the reason is um well i don't know the reason oh i know the reason because we forgot the tab view there we go that is better okay um okay so next one we're gonna create another um and this time it's gonna be a divider sample so funk divider section or sample and uh is it we're gonna say sum view and text divider sample like that okay so we can have divider sample dot tab item and uh, it's just going to be a trailing closure with image system name and uh, let's use doc dot text dot fill just as an example and then text has divider okay so let's see if we can actually get it working try again let's rebuild and then we have two all right let's take another one just to give a variation and this time we're gonna take maybe group samples so we're gonna talk something concrete while we are building these views for our tab okay so we're gonna talk about groups here basically groups in swift ui all right so group sample dot tab 
item. I'm simply going to remove this and put a trade enclosure here, image, system name, and then we're going to have link maybe. Text. Oh, groups. Like so. Okay, and uh, you can resume. And we should see three tabs. So if we interact with them, we have this text content uh, still present there. So let's go ahead and talk, uh, uh, like, or tackle, basically, uh, image. Okay. So you saw how, like, you know, when we created our um, progress bar, we used trim function. So we can use trim function um, a little bit more. So let me see what we have. Like, we have a image one as an image. So we're going to use that image now. So let's go ahead and um, use that image one as an example here we're going to make this resizable and we're going to make this a frame with width as 200 and height as 200 okay uh, we're going to provide the aspect ratio for this one to have content fit and we're going to clip the shape and this is where we're going to initially say uh, let's clip it uh, with a circle okay so if we run this, um, we should have a circular image as a content for this tab, okay? And uh, rest of these others have still have text. Okay, that's good. Now, let's use the trim function to trim the shape. So trim function takes from and to. So basically, it trims the shape by a fractional amount, and you can provide value from and to, for example. So let's say if you want to provide 0 0.2 and you want to trim it to 1.0, this is what it's going to look like. It's like half eaten cookie or something. And uh, this is what it looks like. An arc, basically 0.5. And if you do 0.8, it looks like a slight cut um, of like, you know, of a, a circle. All right, depending upon what you need, uh, I think we can very well say that 0.5 would fit our needs so we can actually just have 0.5 all right so just once again just so you know trim function you can use to create these custom shapes and you can actually rotate the shapes and stuff like that like we did uh in our progress bar so combine these examples experiment with them like you know try to see what you can come up with it's amazing like you know how fast this dry works so you can actually play with your ideas uh, more to create something new. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about dividers. Okay, so in the dividers section, we are, uh, we have already seen like, you know, dividers. So let's go ahead and see what dividers are first. And I don't know if you will be able to see uh, with the screen resolution, but I'll try my best to show you. Okay, so we're gonna have divider. Okay, and then we're gonna have a text divider one okay and uh, then we're gonna have another divider okay so if we go on the divider screen right now if this preview starts to respond I don't know if you can see but uh, there is a there's a line here I don't know if you can, I think you should be able to see now, but um, let's see. I can zoom out a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So you see this line right here. This is your divider, okay? So there are various things we can do. So first of all, depending upon what kind of container it is, it, it either can represent as a horizontal, like, you know, basically horizontal divider, or it can be presented as a vertical divider. So let's create an edge stack here. And I'm going to put a spacer uh, just to show you that um, that effect of, like, you know, squashing a divider be between in between. And uh, I'm going to say divider, not divider, sample, divider. OK, and uh, then put a text between another divider okay so if we go back to our divider again so go ahead and we run our example and uh, 
I'm going to go to divider. As you can see, there's another divider that's uh, showing up here. And uh, this divider is now vertical, depending upon what kind of container it is, right? Now, there's some more properties that you can actually uh, have on dividers. So, for example, you can give divider a height. So, for example, you can say frame height and you can give it 100, okay? So if you give 100 height and uh, go back uh, once again, I know you must be hitting this like, you know, <laughs> rerunning all the preview again, but I don't know, like Xcode is being weird in this sense. But as you can see, we have this uh, height and more space between the content and the divider. So that's what height does, okay? Uh, something else that you can do, you can actually give it a background and uh, you can have like, you know, color, for example, color dot orange and uh, color dot blue may oh green maybe okay so if you do that uh, you are going to notice that your divider has these orange and green colors okay so I mean I know dividers are like you know a little bit um, uh, limited in terms but they're actually there for a reason and uh, there's a specific uh, purpose that they serve. And other than that purpose, like, you know, there are like very limited things that you can do with it. But if it solves your problem, you can actually use them or you can create a custom view with custom width and height and have them act as a divider. So you can create your own custom divider by creating a custom struct, all right? With that said, we have covered pretty much everything that we wanted to cover on dividers. So let's go ahead and talk about groups. Now, you must have seen groups probably, probably not. We did not cover it. But groups are uh, essentially um, uh, similar to containers. Uh, so they don't have any visual representation. They're just like containers that are used to contain elements. Now, if you know, or if you have watched my previous videos, uh, you know that uh, every like container comes with a limit of 10 elements at a time. So if you have static elements inside a container, there can only be 10 elements at a time inside that. So to overcome that limit, you can either create similar container within the container. So for example, if you're creating a V stack, you would create another V stack and like, you know, the remaining of your content would go in there that actually bypasses that 10 element limit. Or if you want to handle this situation more naturally you can create start creating groups inside groups and that would actually group your elements or child elements together and they are wrapped inside another container that actually works or basically have a shared entity that is representing a group of items okay so hope that makes sense uh, we're going to create a very simple example of a vstack with one two three four text written on in the on the screen and we're gonna see how that actually looks. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. So when I say V stack, just wanna show you like you know how groups look like. So gonna have text one and I'm gonna copy this. So first let me show you the limitation. So two, three, four, five, six and I'm going to copy it once again. And uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. As you can see, we are getting this random <laughs> error argument passed to a uh, call, argument passed to the call that takes no argument. Uh, now, if I take these two extra elements out and try to re-render it, it actually works just fine. So it does not have any issue whatsoever um, with rendering these 10 elements. So if you go on groups, uh, you're going to see your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 being printed just like that. Okay. So now what you can do is, one alternate is basically creating another restack right, and embedding that those extra elements into the V stack, right? So let's put 10 here, and uh, that makes up our 10. And uh, let me go ahead and 
we run this. I'm going to actually resize this back. Okay, so as you can see, it's all, it's all good and there's no problem, but instead you can use a group two, which actually can represent the intent of your of your item. So static items, static cells, or static um, objects, and you can have like, you know, a group of similar intent uh, items and wrap them inside that. Now, group also works like a other container because it's another container and you can have like, you know, shared modifiers apply to it. For example, you can have padding, you can have foreground, color, so notice what happens to our um, to our view once we are done with it. So color dot blue. So I'm gonna just give it a blue color for the background and give it a corner radius um, like so. All right, did not mean to do that. And we're gonna say infinity to make it shape like a circle. And then we're gonna have a padding. Okay. So with these changes, let me go ahead and stop and go ahead and restart. And let's go to our groups. And as you can see, our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are written in a regular text versus the group, entire group, is written with this circular view that has numbers inside with custom padding. Okay? So that is what group does to your view. Okay? So with that said, we have covered three different things. We have covered our tabs. We have covered uh, trimming of the image, divider, and groups in this video. So I hope you guys like this video. Once again, this is how you can create your tab with custom views. So enjoy, and uh, let me know if you uh, if you have any questions. But but yeah, uh, we are going to continue to explore more of Swift UI. Uh, in the next video, we are uh, probably going to take a break uh, from exploring all the components and create a rather complex uh, UI uh, that actually can combine some of these components that we have learned in past. And then we're going to, uh, like, you know, create a custom component, another custom component, just to see how that works. So that's how we're going to proceed. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching.